Pastor Moore, on behalf of the reentry team, we want to just let you know how much we love you and how much we appreciate you for all that you do. We, we appreciate you. Happy birthday. Pastor Moore, I was told that they're doing virtual shout outs for your birthday and for clergy appreciation. So I just want to tell you happy birthday. I want to tell you I appreciate you for how you were my pastor in my younger years, uh, what you imparted into me, how you helped me out with things that you track uh, when I was uh, starting out as a musician in the church. Uh, you helped me greatly. I'll, I'll always love you for it. I love uh, how you've treated my family as a pastor. But you did just that. You were the pastor. And you showed them the support, showed me support. And I always appreciate that. So my happy birthday, happy clergy appreciation. Hopefully I'll be down there to see you soon. All right, take care. Happy Pastor Appreciation Month and happy birthday. Hope you enjoy. Hello, Pastor Moore. On behalf of the Sharon Baptist Church Church and Ministry, I want to thank you for everything that you do for the ministry and for the church family. And we thank you, we appreciate you, and we love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You know, happy birthday to Pastor, Pastor Moore. Happy, 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 many, many more. Thank you. Enjoy your day, Pastor Moore. Happy birthday. Good afternoon, Pastor. This is Herman Wilson, hopefully one of your favorite deacons. <laughs> I'm reminded 18 years ago when you first came to Sharon, Sharon was going through trials and tribulations, you might say. When he was going to get a preacher, if he going to get one, who was he going to be? Those are times that I don't particularly want to go through again. But then you came. And we reminded them of the Moses as I think about when you came. And he asked the question, there are no bomb in Gilead. Kind of like my wife, I get like, kind of teared up a little bit when I think about it. The late Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King, he spoke to a crowd in Chicago, Illinois, who, who remained in the wake of the Great Revolution. Answer the correct question. He took Jeremiah's question straight into the explanation point. He began to say, There is a bomb in the unit, and it's a woman for it. There is a bomb in the unit, and it's a woman for So, those were hard times for us. But you became a father. Two families. First, you had your own family. So, you have done a beautiful job. And there was a church family. But you've done an outstanding job. Things that you know, we haven't done all you wanted us to do, haven't said all the things you wanted us to say. And maybe haven't we gone along with you the times you wanted us to go along with you. Just remember that we are not where you are. The Bible says somewhere that remember we're supposed to listen to the past, past listen to the Lord. We love you. We adore you. We know you're for the best. Indicated to me school that you've done a wonderful job in these times of this virus. Wonderful job. Hi, Pastor. I'd just like to say happy birthday to you. Celebrate and do it with all the joy your heart can muster. You know, there are so many things I'd like to say to you today, but time won't permit. So I'll just uh, say a few things. I want you to know that I am totally in awe of how you fed the flock each and every Sunday for almost two years. That's a phenomenal thing. You don't know how much we needed that, and I thank you for it. I also want to thank you for how you supported Herman and me during his illness, how you sat with me at the hospital, how you called and did all you could for me when I lost my sister unexpectedly. Your kindness did not go unnoticed. Pastor, I'm just so proud of you. Um, your presence in Stoneville and all that you do to try to make Stoneville a better place in which to live. And while I'm speaking, I cannot forget that lovely wife of yours, Angela, as I call her. Angela and your children, and even your grandchildren, are a tremendous asset to you. You could not do all of these wonderful things 
but for them having your back. So I appreciate them as well. I know you sometimes say they don't see me, they don't hear me, they don't appreciate me, but the devil is a liar as you always say. Pastor God sees you and I see you. Blessings to you always. Happy birthday, Pastor Moore. We appreciate you. Hi, Pastor and Sister Ann. It's such a pleasure to be on this video to just tell you how much we've enjoyed the years that we've been blessed to have you as our pastor and first lady. You've just been a wonderful example to us of God's love and your vision in moving our church family has been outstanding. We also would like to wish you a very happy birthday and hope that you have many more because I, I would like to leave one little nugget with you. You know, as you get a certain age, the years pass so quickly, but you can always remember that if you, you live each day as if it's your last, you'll be okay. Happy birthday, Kenny. Hope you have a great day. Good evening, Pastor Moore, First Lady Angela Moore. I was told October is Pastor Cure Month, as well as your birthday. Thank you for being such a great pastor, great leader. Lead by example. Always have team concept in your leadership ability. And First Lady Angela Moore, right by your side. So happy birthday, and I would just like to say a change has come over me. Sister Angela Moore, you owe me that song the next time we're in service. God bless you all, and I love you. Happy Pastor Appreciation Month, Pastor Moore. Pastor Moore, we just wanted to take the time to let you know how much we appreciate you, how much we love you, how much we care for you. We couldn't have asked for a better leader or a teacher. You've been a very integral part of our spiritual development, and we just thank you for all that you've done. In the word, it says in Jeremiah that the Lord would send us a pastor after his own heart, that you would fill us with knowledge and understanding. And once again, God's word holds true. We thank you. We love you. And we just hope you have an excellent month. Pastor Moore, you are the best preacher teacher ever. And happy birthday. You are one of the most amazing and academic people that we know. So with that being said, Pastor Moore, from the Craig family to you, happy birthday, happy appreciation month, and we love you! We love you! Pastor Moore, Jamal Davis here, on behalf of the media ministry here, and also the Mixed Network, we'd like to say we love you, we appreciate you for everything that you have uh, done for us. Just continue to enjoy your day and uh, continue to let God Lead and guide you. Be blessed. Hello, Pastor Moore and First Lady Angela Moore. First thing we want to say is thank you. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for your contribution to Stonewall and all of the surrounding communities. You're always there. You're there when we're grieving. You're there when we're in bereavement. You're there when we're sick. So pass You can do better than that. Let's thank God today.
this is the day the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I rejoice today. The Lord allowing me to see another birthday. Come on, let's help me celebrate. And I want to thank our media team and the Mix Network and those who participated in the video. When you get home, go on, look at the live, then go on YouTube today and look at the at the live. They did a wonderful tribute, and I want to say thank you to all of you uh, for your kindness shown toward me this week. I went to the mailbox one day, and the mailbox was full of cards. I was like, Lord, have mercy. So thank you so much. Let me just say that off the, on the start. But we come to worship today. This is the Lord's day, and we want to worship him in spirit and in truth. Our praise team is going to bring us uh, our, our opening praise and worship song. offer a praise right here. Oh, come on, open up your mouth and offer a praise. Open up your mouth and offer up worship. God, we love you. We thank you. We bless your holy name. We welcome you, those of you who are in the sanctuary, to this worship experience today. 
we continue to pray God's blessings upon you. I know you like me, it's just something about being in the sanctuary. And we thank God for you that have sacrificed to come to be with us on this Sunday morning. And we even welcome those who are joining by live stream. We pray God's blessings upon you and your family. Get your Bibles in for our morning scripture reading. It will be taken from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We honor our ministers today and our deacons and our trustees and all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to be here. I said it's good to be here. Romans chapter 8. To our musicians and to our re-entry team and all of those, our ushers who are serving so beautifully. We thank God for you. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 35, the word of God declares, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, God help me in here, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be unto our God. Minister Nasser Red is going to come and lead us in our work meditation prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'll let nothing. We'll let nothing. We will let nothing separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus. I just want to start this prayer with a simple little song. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today and we thank you, God, for your many blessings. You have been so good to us. God, we thank you today for your grace, your mercy, and your love. God, we thank you today that we were able to get up out of our beds. We were able to come to this sanctuary, or we were able to even look at you through live stream. God, we just say thank you today. We thank you, God, because you are a God that sits high, and you look low, and you know all about us. God, you see us for who we really are. But God, you keep on loving us anyhow. So we say thank you. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for your son, Jesus, who suffered, bled, and died. But God, on the third day, he rose with all power in his hand. And so today, we thank you for that. We thank you, God, that through his blood, our sins are covered today. God, there is none like you. You are above all gods. And God, we just say thank you today. God, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus to touch all of those, God, that are in this sanctuary and all of those that are watching today, our live stream. Whatever their needs may be, God, we ask it right now in the name of Jesus. For you said in your word that we could ask anything in your name. And if we diligently seek your God, you would give it to us. 
So God, we're seeking after you. We're running after you. Oh God, we're looking to you for our help. God, we ask you to touch everyone today that is sick, that's in bereavement, God. And God, they are too numerous for us to call by name. But God, we know that you know. And that's where we put our faith and our trust, is that you know. For when I just think of you knowing, when I just think of you knowing, God, my heart leaps with gladness when I just think about you knowing and that you are able to do something about it. We may not could be there, God, but we know that you can, and we are asking you to be there. God, bless the manservant that's going to bring the break the bread of life for us. Touch him right now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, and restore him as he pours out to us. Bless Pastor Moore, God, as he celebrates another birthday today. Touch him, give him wisdom, God, in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for that. God, we thank you, we love you, and we adore you, for it's in Jesus' name. We pray and we count victory right now. Amen.
song says, oh, give thanks for his mercy endures forever. Anybody glad this morning for his mercies that has been stowed upon your life? Oh, y'all can do better than that. We're going to celebrate the mercies, the kindness of God that has been stowed upon us. I want to remind the church family to keep in prayer those families that are in bereavement. Um, continue to pray for my cousin Tammy. Tinsley, she was a moor, lost her husband just a few weeks ago. Some of you may have known that. And William Dalton, Minister Ann Dalton, lost her husband this week. There's so much been happening so quickly. Um, oftentimes, we don't get a chance to even pray for those families at the church, but I want you to know that you ought to always be praying for your community and the families around. Then that gives you reason to thank God that you're still here. Pray for Lauren Webster, who's still going through at Chapel Hill Hospital. Um, her situation is very critical right now. But God is a healer. I said God is a healer. And the Bible says that the fervent and effectual prayers of the righteous. I wish I was in a prayer church. Availeth much. Anybody still believe in prayer around here? I believe if we pray and we pray right, heaven will respond uh, to our requests. Uh, so we praise God for that. Listen, you, I'll, I'll say one more time, thank you for all of the kindness bestowed during this Pastor Appreciation Month and today being my birthday. We celebrate all pastors all over our communities and around the world who spread God's gospel. And, uh, and today I want to take privilege and celebrated as Clergy Appreciation Month and celebrate the clergy, the associate ministers of Sharon Missionary Baptist Church. Come on, let's celebrate our own. We celebrate all of them and for their, their work that they do here. Now, now, when you think of my birthday, you got to think of one more person, Deacon Thomas Gales. His birthday is today, too. Let's thank God for him. Come on, y'all. Let's thank God for Deacon Thomas. If it wasn't his birthday, I'd make him sing something. That's all right. I'll get him another time. I'm going to let him relax on his birthday. Somebody say, make him sing anyhow. Come on, Deacon Thomas, sing something. This is our birthday. We can do whatever we want to today. Come on. Come on. Come on, sing just a little bit of something. Just sing a little bit of something. It don't even matter. Just whatever. You know, you just sing a verse or two or something. Don't y'all want to hear Deacon Tommy? I'm trying to how to do a little bit. Of it. Go to the storm that the music 
to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. And when the earth all around me is sinking sand, oh Christ, that solid rock I will stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of myself. I can go up to the stone that the builders I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. Oh, when the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ that solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a I go on to the rock. And when I need a friend, I go I go to the rock right Jesus. When I when I need someone to lean on, I go to the rock right Jesus. When I need a shelter, I go to the rock right Jesus. When when I need a shelter now, hey, I go to the rock right Jesus. Because on Christ the solid rock I stand. On Christ that solid rock I stand. On Christ that solid rock I stand. Because all the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. And, and when the earth all around me is sinking sand. On Solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Amen. Yes, 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 sir. The rock of my salvation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I need a shelter. When I need a friend, I go to the rock. Come on, y'all ought to help and praise it. Oh, yes. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Bless you ought to look down your row and tell them, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the rock that the builders rejected. Yes, sir. And if they look like they're still wondering who's your rock, you tell them, Jesus is my rock. Shout yes. Tell somebody, Jesus is my rock. My, 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 my. Thank you, Jesus. Would I need a shelter? I said, when I need a shelter and when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Yes, sir. We got time to praise this. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is my rock. My, my, my. That's good news for the day. I said that's good news for the day. People are going through all around us. You ought to encourage somebody to say, go to Jesus. He is our rock. He is our rock. He's my help in the times of trouble. I'm a move. 
this is a party, ain't it? I thought this was a birthday party. I said, I thought this was a party here this morning. We ought to give him praise. Because he is. He is our rock. God bless your name. I'm going to try to move. Come on, let's clap our hands. Thank God for the gift of Deacon Tommy Scales. Let's thank God for the gift that he holds in his heart. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Oh, bless your name. Thank you so much, Deacon Tommy. You better praise him while you can. I said, you better praise him while you can. Ain't no harm to praise him. The old saints used to say, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Has he done anything for you? You want to give him glory in this place. You ought to give him glory. We got time. Praise is always in order. Yes, sir. Clap your hands one more time and give him praise for being our rock. Sometimes you just gotta go for yourself. I say sometimes you just gotta go for yourself. Sometimes you just gotta go for yourself. God bless you today. I make, I make, I make no apologies. I said I make no apologies for praise in the sanctuary. For the Bible declares that the Lord inhabits the praise of his people. And if we were to be real honest today, we all could testify that if it had not been, Isha, 
for the Lord who was on our side. We wouldn't be here today. I said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we wouldn't be here today. And we are admonished to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. I'm trying to quit. <laughs> and bless his name. God, we love you today. And we thank you for your spirit that you allow to dwell at Sharon. We give you glory, God. This moment we pause, and I'm getting ready to let this preacher preach. But giving is a part of our worship. We are admonished to bring our tithes and offering to the storehouse. That there might be meat in the Lord's house. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be able to give something, a portion back that the Lord has blessed me with. Because if he hadn't blessed me, I wouldn't have nothing to give. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Those of you in the sanctuary, just, just get your offering ready. We're going to give it on our way out. And those who you're watching by live stream, particularly the members of Sharon, if you're not in the sanctuary on Sunday, you still have an obligation to support your church. So amen, somebody. We have several ways that you can give your gifts unto the Lord, whether you mail them to the church at P.O. Box 750 Stoneville, North Carolina, or drive by the church and drop it in our drop box, uh, the door of the fellowship hall, or you can go on the GiveLify app and give. But whatever you do, you are to give as unto the Lord. Jesus says as according that he has blessed you. But you cannot be God-given. And you cannot ignore the fact that you are admonished to give your tithe and your offering. I knew it was going to get quiet right there. I'm trying to help folk be blessed. Because we have been told that if you give it, I'll bless you, press down, running over, shaking together. Shall men give to your bosom? And there are some that are watching me by live stream, and you are struggling. You don't know why you can't get above ground. That's because you're not doing what the Lord told you to do. Whether you're a member of Sharon or just somebody else watching, and I'm talking to the members of Sharon, it's time for you to do what the Lord said do. And whether you come to the sanctuary or not, you ought to give as the Lord has blessed you. Say amen, somebody. Get your gifts in the hand. God, we thank you today for those who are given. For bringing the gifts as unto the Lord so that this house will have what it needs. Continue to build your kingdom and tear down Satan's kingdom. We praise your name, O oh God, for what you've already done. How you take little and make it much in our lives. Thank you. Always making ways when there appears to be no way. God, we celebrate it today. We give you all the glory. Now pray, we pray blessings upon the gifts that are going to be given on today, oh God, that you would bless the giver till their cup runs over. And when you do it, we give you all the credit in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Clap your hands one more time. God bless you. Our praise team is going to come and offer a song of inspiration. Our son of the church, Minister Kratori Mobley, is going to come and share the, the word with us today. 
And I'm grateful for his faithfulness to this church. He and his wife, they made a commitment to be here. And, and I love him and I thank God for him. For all of our ministerial staff who make themselves available to their pastor. And it gives me a chance to just catch my breath. Amen, somebody. And I told him I wasn't preaching on my birthday. I got too many preachers looking at me that one of them can preach. And I'm grateful for them today. Pray for him as he gets ready to come to share the word of God. This is the most important part of the service. This is why I got him and got dressed. To come to hear a word from the Lord. The praise team is going to come now. Bless him. After that, Mr. Couture remotely. Come on and bless him. If you know that he's wonderful, come on and bless him. Come on, let's magnify him. 
For the Bible declares, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on, lift him up, lift him up. If you lift him, he'll bless you. If you lift him, he'll make a way. If you lift him, he'll turn your midnight into day. Come on, somebody help me lift Jesus. Amen, amen. We give honor to God who is the head of our lives. Can we celebrate our pastor, the honorable reverend, future reverend Dr. Kenneth N. Moore. Let's give God praise for our pastor. Amen, amen. I told you on your video, you, you're getting old, Doc. You're getting old. <laughs> but we give God praise for our pastor and to the Rose of Sharon, First Lady Moore. Let's give God praise for First Lady. We honor you, we honor you. And I'd be remiss if I didn't give praise and glory and honor to God for the woman in my life who holds me together, keeps me in order and in check. The love of my life minister today, Walker Mobley. I honor God and to all of you, my father's children, we honor everyone in their respectable places. Truly indeed, we count it a privilege and an honor to stand and bring you another gospel message just to let you know that Jesus is still Lord and he's still on the throne and there's still a blessing in store for those that love him. This morning, we're not going to prolong the time, but join me, if you will, in the book of Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 6. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. He's a counselor, a prince of peace. Almighty God is he. He keeps saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, and I'm going to praise his name. That's what they sung when I was coming up. They just said, he's wonderful, wonderful. Jesus is to me. Then they would say, he's a counselor a prince of peace almighty god is he he keeps saving me keeping me from all sin and shame wonderful is my redeemer and i'm gonna praise his name hallelujah he's wonderful wonderful jesus is to me He's a counselor, the prince of peace. Almighty God is he. He keeps saving me and keeping me from all sin and shame. I said, wonderful is my redeemer, and I'm going to praise his name. That's it. That, but that's what they said. He's wonderful. That, that, yes, sir, that's Alabama all the way. <laughs> and then they said, everybody don't know who Jesus is. Everybody don't know who Jesus is. Everybody don't know who Jesus is everybody don't know who Jesus is and then they would say something like this they would say they would say he's the lily of the valley and he's he's the bright and morning star and he the God of all creation. And uh, everybody ought to know. That's it. 
Nehemiah 4 and 6. says, so we built the wall. And the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. So we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. And this morning, if I could just take just a few moments of your time, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to rebuild. It's time to rebuild. Here recently, Sade and I moved into our new apartment. And one of the craziest things that Sade likes to do, and I do not understand it, but she loves to do the do-it-yourself projects. I I don't like do-it-yourself projects because I've never been good at them. I haven't been able to put together anything in my life. I haven't even put together a good puzzle yet, Pastor. And she's talking about do-it-yourself projects. And on this particular uh, journey of project, she said, babe, I want to put together a fireplace. I said, a fireplace? I said, let's do something small, like put together, uh, put together like a little box or something. What you got to do a fireplace? So we're putting together the fireplace. Well, she's putting together the fireplace. I'm watching her. And she gets frustrated. She gets aggravated. And she throws the book and she said, you know what, Katori, I don't even want the fireplace. Take it apart and take it and put it in a trash can. Hence the reason I don't like do-it-yourself projects. Because I'm the one that's always got to take it apart and then throw it away. And what I begin to see here is that in the building, in the process of her building, she made sure that first thing she had all the tools that she needed. She made sure she had the hammer. She made sure she had the drill. She made sure she had the right screws. She made sure all of these things were in place. And then the next thing is she had her manual in her hand. And she began to look at the manual. She read the manual. She studied it. Not only did she study the manual, she studied the picture. Because she said sometimes the manual goes against the picture. So she wanted to make sure the picture is right. And so, and so she had all of these things. And the Lord began to tell me, he says, Katori, tell my people that it's time for them to rebuild. And they've got to rebuild this time with the right stuff. They've got to rebuild this time with the right stuff. Journey with me, if you will, into Nehemiah's time. Nehemiah, prophet here, um, is prophesying during the time of the exile. If you know anything about church history, the children of Israel were exiled into Babylonian captivity for over 70 years. But God began to speak through prophets such as Isaiah and Jeremiah and tell them that even though my people are going away into captivity, I'm going to bring them out at an appointed time. And during this exile, they were exiled as far as the north, the east, the south, and the west. They were exiled from the promised land. Uh, They were exiled from the land that was promised them from their ancestors. Uh, The land that God had made a covenant with Abraham back in Genesis the 35th chapter, saying that I'm going to make your seed dwell in a land that flows in milk and honey. Uh, He he began to, to show and tell us that they went into captivity and this captivity caused them to be distressed. Uh, They could not worship the way that they were accustomed to worshiping Uh, because even the foreigners asked them, sing us one of them Lord's songs y'all sing. And they repeated, how can we sing the Lord's song in such a strange land? Uh, But then the Lord said, well, Couture, you don't even have to go that far back. He said, don't you remember the 19 months I was carrying you all through COVID-19? He said, that was a type of exile. He said, and I had to exile you because just like the children of Israel, there were some abominable things that were going on in my house, and I had to clean the temple. 
I had to purge uh, the temple because of the hypocrisy that was going on in my house. I had to purge the temple because there were people who were prophesying in the church. There I had to purge the temple because there were people offering up strange fire. Uh, they, they were worshiping me with their lips, but their hearts were far from me. And he said, Katori, I sent COVID-19, or I allowed rather COVID-19 to come upon my people because I had to test and find out where does their heart really lie. Uh, I, I wanted to find out was their heart associated with a title or a position or was it really with me? I had to figure out was their, was their heart really associated with a structure or a building or was it really with me? And he said, I have exiled my people for a reason. He said, but now Nehemiah here is coming back with the group, with the remnant that remains. And they're coming back to Jerusalem in order to rebuild the temple. Uh, history tells us in the Bible declares uh, that the king, uh, that the Assyrian king has given permission for them to return, for the children of Israel to return back to their homeland and rebuild their city. And when they get back to the city, they find that the city has laid in desolation. The city has been abandoned. The city has been burned with fire. The gates of the temple have been destroyed. The walls have been destroyed. The place that they once knew as glory and splendor, the place where they once knew where the presence of God resided, has been left in rubbish. And the people began to become discouraged. Uh, does that not sound just like us in today's time? Uh, we've come back to church and we've had to come back on restrictions. We've had to come back to church with masks. On. We've had to come back to church and social distancing and people are weary because they were like, I, this is not worship as I once knew it. This is not worship as I'm accustomed to it. I'm not accustomed to being on Zoom. I'm not accustomed uh, to doing teleconferences. I'm not accustomed to just watching Facebook at home. And now the Lord is saying that, Katori, what I need you to do is build again. And when you build this this time you got to build with the right stuff and understand that anytime you rebuild anything it is a process uh, that, that's a, that's a nasty word because humanity does not like the word process uh, because process does two, three things uh, it, it is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end in the legal sense, it's a summons requiring for somebody to appear in court. And in its verbal use, it's a performance of series of mechanical or chemical operations in order to change or preserve something. Uh, can, let me tell you, let me break it down into layman terms. The process brings you to your expected end. The process requires for you to stand before judgment. And the process requires for you to change and preserve that which is in you. I'll replay it for you. Uh, the, the process requires for you to get to your expected end. The process summons you to stand before judgment and the process requires for you to change and preserve that which is in you. And so when we begin to rebuild in this season, we have to understand that we can rebuild in confidence because God already has a plan in place. Mm. Uh, the reason why I can rebuild now is I can build according to God's plan is because I already know he made a promise. Uh, Nehemiah is not building this temple based upon just his intellectual knowledge, uh, but he's building this temple with in mind that God, you've already spoken it through Jeremiah, and you've already spoken it through Isaiah, that we're going to come back and fortify our city. 
we're going to come back to the place that you promised us. We're going to come back and dwell and be the people of God that you have called for us to be. And I want to encourage just about five of you right through here to let you know that you have no business being weary in well-doing when you know that there's a promise already been made over your life. Uh, uh, don't forget the promise, beloved, because it's in the promise that God possesses your soul. It's in the promise that God has your victory. It's in the promise that God has the fulfillment of joy for your life. And there are many people who never make it to all that they're called to be, never make it to all that they're supposed to be because they die in the process. Mm. Uh, they, 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 they die in the process and instead of taking the process for what it is as just a series of events to get me to my next they become attached to the process they become emotionally dependent upon the process and we begin to do things such as normalizing trauma and pain we begin to normalize abusive relationships we begin to normalize toxic friendships and, and we begin to normalize not having enough we begin to normalize the lack in our lives and we begin to normalize dysfunction in the family. We begin to normalize these things. Oh, but God sent me by here to tell you that you cannot get comfortable in a process that was never meant for you to be, that was never meant to be your destiny. Mm -mm. The, the, the process was never meant to be your destiny. We, we have made houses in temporary things. We have made houses and we've built our mansions and we put our security into things that God said I was only needing that to preserve you for the temporary. But we have come now to the place where we're trying to preserve that and which God himself is trying to break apart. Uh, we, we we're trying to hold fast to old habits of work we're trying to hold fast uh, to the old way. We're trying to hold fast to those things in which have made us comfortable. We're trying to hold fast to those things that we once held near and dear. But God said, when I built the temple this time, that uh, this building is not going to look like the last one. Hmm. Listen, there, there was a difference, and when Nehemiah is building this temple, uh, you have to understand the difference is that this temple does not look as glorious as the former temple. Uh, this temple is not looking to be desirable. The old temple had glass stained windows and had chandeliers, but this temple, uh, it looks different. It's a little raggedy. Uh, they got floorboards in there, and, 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 and it is not made out of the same material as the last temple. And the Bible goes on to say in the chapter that when they even laid the foundation, that the youth began to rejoice in jubilance and in praise, but the old men began to cry and weep because they were remembering what once was and I come by to tell you that that's the dichotomy that we live in in the church world today where we have young people rejoicing because they love this new way of doing church but the old saints are looking and saying this is not what I expected and so what do we do then when we're in between and betwixt where we were and where we're going how do we survive the in between seasons how do we make it through I'm so glad you asked we make it through by trusting God through it all. We make it through by understanding uh, by, by understanding that in one part, we've got to be willing to surrender and submit ourselves to whatever the will of God is for our lives. And the issue I'm having with this church is we don't want to submit to anything. Oh, we don't want to submit. We don't want to give up our power. We don't want to give up our control. Uh, all because of the fact that in the process we begin to face trouble uh, in rebuilding the wall they faced trouble and they became discouraged because uh, if you kept reading in Nehemiah you would see where the inhabitants of the land came to Nehemiah and said man why are y'all rebuilding these walls why are you trying to rebuild this temple
people. In fact, about it, they got so mad about it that they wrote a letter to the king and said, do you not know that the Israelites have returned to their city just in order to defy you? Uh, and the king ordered an issue for them to stop working. Understand that when you begin to rebuild yourself, when you begin to rebuild your purpose, when you begin to rebuild what it is God has given you, the enemy will do everything in his power to slow you down. Because uh, the enemy does not want you to be what God has called for you to be. And so what happens is the king puts out an edict because understand that there has been time passed from the death of King uh, of, of Assyria to now King Darius. And King Darius comes along and tells the people, I've searched the record book and in fact the promise was given from the king. Uh, the promise was already made and you shall continue your work. I come by to tell you that no matter what it is you're facing in your process don't give up because God still has remembered you. God has not forgotten you in the process and the king ordered that they continue to build and continue to work uh, but this is the blessing part and I promise you I'm almost done that God tells and God speaks his word for them to keep building and Gerald and, and, and the prophet Nehemiah says and we got it halfway done because the people had a mind to work. Uh, I understand that this began to wrestle in my spirit. He said Katori their focus was not on what everybody else said anymore. It was on completing the work. Their focus was not on their situations but it was on completing the work and Sharon if I could just prophesy in this house for a minute is we've got to get our focus back. We can't focus on what we lost. We can't focus on what's no longer here. But we've got to focus on the work that's at hand. We've got to focus on what God has placed directly in front of us. We've got to focus that God has given us another chance and another opportunity to worship and magnify him. No, it don't look like that which is of old. And no, it don't feel the same. Oh, but God said, but my glory in the new house will be great than my glory in the first house and I just want to prophesy that if you will remain faithful to the work that's at hand then the glory in your next house will be greater than the glory that's in your current mm. Oh, you thought you lost something when you were in your last relationship. And you thought you lost something when you were at your last job. But the glory in the next is greater than the glory that was. I, oh, somebody say, I've got to rebuild this time. I've I got to rebuild this time. I, 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 I understand that I've let pride get in the way, but I'm rebuilding now. I, I understand I let my pride, my selfishness get in the way, but I'm rebuilding now. Why? Because I know that glory is coming. Oh. Oh, and that's a good place to give God praise when you understand that the glory of God is getting ready to come. Oh, the reason I can't give up right here is because I haven't seen the glory of God. I told you that a process is to do three things. The process is made in order for you to change. The process is made in order for you to come before judgment, for you to judge yourself and get out everything that's not like God. And that's what God is saying. I'm doing in this season is I'm giving you the opportunity to judge yourself and clean up your house and prepare yourself because my glory will not dwell in an unclean temple but I need for somebody who has a revelation from God to understand that God is at work and he has not forgotten his promise he said I gotta finish what I promised Abraham and I come by to tell you that that's the beauty of it all is that God never forgot his promise in spite of their disobedience he never forgot his promise in spite of them going after idols he never forgot his promise in spite of them is owning him. He never forgot his promise. And I don't know how far it is you may have went, but God has not forgotten the promise that he spoke over your life. For he said before you were in your
your mother's belly, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet and to go into the nations. And I come by to tell you, Sharon, I don't know how far we may have strayed, but it's time we get our focus back because the next wave of glory is about to hit this house. And I come by to tell you that on his birthday, we got to stand still. We got to stand together. Get behind the pastor and say we're full speed ahead. We can't stop here. We got too many devils to fight. We can't stop here. We got too many devils to cast out. We can't stop here. There are too many souls need to be saved. It's not about the money, but it's about his glory. It's not about the title. It's about his glory. I heard the Bible declare that weeping may endure for a night. They came back weeping, but they left out rejoicing because they remain faithful to the work. And Sharon, you got to be faithful when it's hard. Be faithful with tears in your eyes. Be faithful when they lie on you. Be faithful when they talk about you. Be faithful when they lay you off your job. Be faithful when they lay you off your job. Be faithful when you got more bills than money. Be faithful because the Bible declares that yet in a little while, he which was will come. And I come to prophesy that the Lord is coming to see about you. It's time to rebuild because we just sung it upon this rock. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I come to tell you that we're built upon the rock. We're standing upon the rock. There's too much in you to die right now. But rebuild, rebuild, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. I come to tell you it's time to rebuild. We've been here long enough. We've been here before. And God says, are you ready for the next wave? Are you ready for a new thing? Watch me. Watch me. Don't doubt it. But watch fast and pray and seek my face. I come to tell you, it's time to rebuild. I know it's hard, but rebuild. I know it's hard, but rebuild. Sedaya got those tools, and she kept working. She wasn't going to stop. I said, baby, let's eat. She kept on working. I said, Sedaya, it don't look right. She said, I got to keep working. She kept reading the manual. She said, this part goes here, and that part goes there. I said, but baby, it ain't tight enough. She said, shut up, Katori. I still got work to do. And I come by to tell you that you got to be persistent in your process to know that there's work to do. She wasn't listening to my opinion, but she understood the task that was in her hand. And she said, I can't stop until it's finished. Oh, good God Almighty, ain't that what Jesus said? Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. He completed the work that he was sent to do. Sharon, we got to work to complete the work that God sent us to do. And he said, greater works shall you do than I have done. You're going to cast out devils. You're going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You're going to walk through the fire and it will not burn you. You're going to walk through the flood and it will not overtake you. Sell somebody. It's time. It's time. 
to rebuild, build it again. Keep at it, Pastor. Stay the course. Don't give up. I know it's hard. I know you get frustrated, but stay the course. Because glory is coming after a while. He will not forget your labor of love. There's more to your story. Increase and favor. Increase and power. Increase and anointing. Increase and joy. Increase. Sharon, that's it. It's just time to rebuild. Rebuilding requires refocus. Rebuilding requires repositioning. And because Nehemiah was in the posture, woo, and because Nehemiah was in the posture, he said because Nehemiah was in the right posture, that's what happened. He said the glory hit because this time it was built by men with clean hands. He said, Katori, I wasn't worried about how it looked. He said, because all I needed was for somebody to have clean hands. I just needed somebody who said, God, I'm going to believe I'm going to do your will in spite of. I'm going to do your will. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be obedient, even if it costs me everything. Because I understand that the power is not in what I lost. But the power, whoo, shit, whoo, is in what is to come. And so I come by to tell you that we got to build our hope on things eternal. And hold to God's unchanging hand. Sharon, there's more. But the question is, are you hungry for it? There's more for you. But I want to know if there's just about 10 people who can stand on your feet right now. And say, preacher, I'm hungry for more. Then praise him like you're hungry for it. Come on, I need to hear the sound of the praises. I need to hear the sound of the worshipers. Praise him if you're hungry for more. If you're hungry for a new revelation. If you're hungry for more power. If you're hungry for a move of God. Praise him. Praise him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast of the Lord. The righteous shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together for the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever his mercy endure forever they are renewed day by day I'm walking in a rebuilt anointing I'm walking in a rebuilt anointing I'm walking in a rebuilt anointing he's rebuilding my faith He's rebuilding my hope. He's rebuilding my joy. He's rebuilding it. Work. 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 Fast. Pray. Work. Fast. Pray. Work. Fast. Pray. Work. Work. Continue to remain on your feet. God, we thank you for your word today. For pushing us, oh God, to reset our focus. Rebuild our mindsets. So that we can endure the process. For the glory that shall come. 
shall be greater than the glory that has been. So we thank you for your word today. We pray, O oh God, that that word would sit in our belly, in our heart, in our minds, down to the very core of our bones, O oh God. Thank you for your word. We anticipate glory. It's about your glory. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Help us, O oh God, to do the work that's been assigned to our hand. Refocus, rebuild our imaginations for what you are capable for. For you promised that eyes have not seen, dear God. Neither have ears heard or has it entered into the hearts of men things that you have prepared for us. So we say yes, Lord. I wish somebody would shout yes, Lord. Sing it, Pop. God, we need you to release your power. Let your presence fall. time. 